Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, my name's Ryan, the head keeper of herpetology department here at Cincinnati Zoo. And welcome to Salamander Saturday. First Saturday every May is Salamander Saturday. It is a, uh, we'll call it a holiday, uh, developed by the uh, Foundation for the Conservation of Salamanders, fcsal.org. And today we're gonna celebrate that by highlighting one of our favorite animals here at the zoo. And that is a Japanese giant salamander, Andreas japonicus. This is the second largest salamander in the entire world. It's found only in Japan in clear, uh, cold, fast-moving streams. And they have incredible camouflage, as you can probably tell. It's very hard to catch them here. There's a lot of glare on these, on these pools. Now, we're one of the very few, if not the only place in North, in North America that keep these guys outside year-round. We have extremely good life support on these guys. And they have chilled systems. We never let this water get above 62 degrees. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to feed these guys for you. They, have, they eat a lot of fish and a lot of other vertebrate prey. We have uh, John is uh, my buddy over here, my co-worker. He's going to feed them some salmon pieces. Um, but these guys are actually IUCN listed as near threatened. A lot of habitat loss is, is a big driver of that reduction in population, as well as dammed water systems. So like I said, these guys like fast moving water and everything like that. But when you start damming up these water systems, uh, kind of erases these habitats and that's a big driver for the loss of these guys but they're extremely cool large animals i said they're the second largest animal in the world this is steve and he's our largest of the japanese giant salamanders here at the cincinnati zoo and he weighs upwards of 30 pounds and john's going to put some in here right now so they can they have kind of poor eyesight little tiny eyes but they smell really really well as john's going to draw them out so you can kind of see them here Come on, Steve. And what we're, this is a salmon fillet. We filleted this already up. Top grade stuff. They eat better than me. <laughs> so he knows it's there. And you kind of, hopefully you guys are seeing this and seeing how, how large of an animal this actually is. We actually have a very close relative that is here in the United States. And that is the hellbender, which we also have on exhibit in the reptile house. You can go up and see them. There's only three species in the cryptobranchidae family, the Japanese giant salamander, the hellbender, and the largest salamander species, the Chinese giant salamander. Now what you're gonna see him do, he's got a kind of uh, vacuum maneuver. If that gets too close, he bites and sucks it in. And then you can watch this is gonna disappear on the second or third bite. It's there, and then it'll just, gone. Mm. See you later. So do they have teeth, Ryan? They do. They have two rows of, uh, on the top and bottom of lots and lots of tiny, sharp teeth. It's made to hold on to things like that. So they'll eat a lot of vertebrate prey, a lot of uh, other amphibians sometimes, fish, uh, crustaceans, and they need that, those strong, tiny teeth to hold on to the prey that they're going to eat. How, how often do you feed them? Uh, how often do we feed them? Not much, believe it or not. They're cold water animals, so we probably only feed them what do you say, John, once a month or so? Maybe less, maybe more. It's definitely a seasonal variation. Um, as we get closer to the warmer months, which is closer to their breeding season, uh, we'll probably feed them a little less, and they actually eat a little more during the colder time of year. Audrey wants to know if they're endangered. Audrey, they are not currently endangered. They are listed as near threatened. Uh, but it's not going to be long if we don't take some action before that could happen. Like I said earlier, damming up water systems, habitat fragmentation, and there's an introduced uh, population of Chinese giant salamanders in Japan that also has affected these guys' population, and they are declining. Joseph asks, how long do they live? Joseph? We're not really sure. These guys right here are 31 years old. There are reports of them living well past 60 years of age, and I wouldn't be surprised if they lived a lot longer than that. Claire asked, do they ever eat plants? Claire, I've never seen them eat plants, not on purpose. Sometimes I, I would assume there's some byproducts that they would bite, like you see that sucking maneuver, that vacuum kind of uh, action that they did when they eat, sometimes stuff gets caught in there. But funny enough, a lot of carnivores, like this guy, uh, they'll eat a lot of that by happenstance because a lot of the fish and the, and the prey that they're eating also have, uh, they, they eat plants and they have that in their gut already. So sometimes they inadvertently eat it that way as well. 
Kathy asked, do we ever feed them live fish in the pond? There are live shiners and sometimes minnows that we keep stocked in the pond. Uh, we treat those fish just like we would treat collection animals. We, we feed those animals, take very good care of them, and keep an eye on those guys. But they are part of an enrichment. They have the option to escape these animals and kind of live their own lives in here as well. But uh, that is a, an important component to, to the enrichment of these guys and the welfare of giant salamanders. Susan asks, how long is he? Uh, how long is he? He is probably in the 36 inch to 42 inch, somewhere around that. little. Maybe three and a half foot range is where we put him closer to maybe four, not quite four, maybe tip to tip, but it's a pretty large guy. Is that as big as they get? Or can they yeah, get he is. He is a pretty large specimen himself. They usually don't get that big. Our other male in here uh, is probably about uh, 16 or 17 pounds and maybe 30 inches or so. And again, he's he's right around uh, 30 pounds. Brady wanted to know if they ever come out of the water. It's rare here. We don't see it that often, but uh, in their natural habitat, uh, they, they may go uh, get outside the water to move from one water system to the other water system in search of either food or uh, new breeding grounds to find a, a suitable mate. Julia wanted to know if they lay eggs. They do. The females lay eggs in big, string, in big strings uh, and then they're guarded until they hatch. Uh, that's one of the things that we, why, one of the reasons we have them outside is actually we'd like to be one of the first, uh, I believe we'd actually be the first to get fertilized eggs uh, from the Japanese giant, giant salamanders outside of Japan. Uh, we're one of only a few institutions that actually houses this particular species. Uh, so we're kind of excited to try this new, well, they've been out here about two years, so it's not entirely new. John's gonna give another nice looking piece of salmon. How many eggs do they lay? I wanna say they lay, John, you're gonna have to help me here. Is uh, It's about 50 to 100 maybe yeah. on the smaller side and can be up to 200. Yes, yeah, could be a couple hundred. And do a lot of things eat their eggs? A lot of things will, for sure. That's a high energy, um, yolk filled little ball of calories that a lot of animals will try to. So that's why they're guarded. And while they're guarding them, that's what these dens are for. You may see uh, a den in the background that are kind of obviously very synthetic that we made to make it easier for them to get in and for us to check on them. They like these dens that are uh, out of the slow moving water. And they go in there and they'll hide in there and then they'll guard the eggs and then they'll also uh, use their tail to kind of uh, aerate the eggs as well and provide a little more oxygen to keep those eggs eggs going. Do you know how long it takes for the egg to hatch? I'm sure someone does. It's pretty. They're pretty well bred uh, and reproduced in Japan. Um, I don't know that offhand. I probably should have looked that up. That's a good question. It's never bad to say I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Chloe asks, what's their best sense? Their best sense? Probably their fashion sense. Hmm. I think they have incredible <laughs> camouflage, as you can kind of tell. Um, sometimes even harder for us to see, uh, but they probably have chemosensory. It's probably their best sense, uh, able to pick up uh, uh, chemical cues uh, through their olfactory senses, smelling. Couple questions about like how big are their eggs? About the size of a, of a of a typical marble, and they'll get a little bit. They'll they'll start out a little smaller, and they'll imbibe with water a little bit as as they mature. But that's about the size they're going to be, size of a marble. Katie asked, do they have a favorite food? Oh, do they have a favorite food? They seem to love any type of fish. Um, we do usually put some uh, crustaceans in here at times. Um, they do love squid. They really like squid. John, what is their favorite? John is their primary caretaker, so having him here as my backup is good. Yes, yeah, seems like stinky fish. Stinky fish. <laughs> so mark that down. That's from, the, that's from the primary caretaker. Stinky fish is a Japanese giant salamander favorite. Kendall asked, do they have any predators? Uh, their predators diminish, get fewer as they get bigger, but when they're younger, they have a lot of predators, including uh, other Japanese giant salamanders. Billy wanted to know if they're dangerous to people. Not at all. Not at all. They're not dangerous to people whatsoever. They don't want anything to do with people. As big as they are, you know, an eight-year-old child is still bigger. Yeah, and if you guys, we're going to move on a little bit. Hopefully the glare's not too bad, but we have a female in here. This is Priscilla. I don't know if we can see her, but John's going to feed her another piece. She's got her head poking out of one of our dens we made for her. They acclimate really well to tong feeding as well. So they have the option and, and the choice to free feed. And we also give them uh, tong feed. Oh yeah, that was a good bite. Gone. Wow. Holy moly. I hope you guys <laughs> can see that on there. This glare is wicked. 
That's a lot of salmon just gone. <laughs> Claire asked, does this one have a name? Yes, Claire, this is Priscilla. Priscilla, okay. Yep. And Layla wants to know, where are their eyes? Well, it's very difficult to see their eyes because it's almost hidden, but they're um, way off to the side and kind of closer to the front. They're tiny little beady eyes. It's very, very, it would be impossible to show you here, but that is a good uh, web search and you'll see it. Japanese giant salamander. We're gonna go back to Steve. <laughs> Amelia asked, um, how often do they need to breathe air? Well, they actually breathe air through their skin. They breathe cutaneously. You can kind of see folds along the sides of those body, uh, sides of their body, and what that does is uh, creates a lot of surface area, a lot of extra surface area, and their skin is highly vascular as well. So they just pull oxygen out of the water. They will occasionally take gulps of air, but primarily they breathe the oxygen in the water. A lot of questions on if these would make good pets. Oh, my classic answer is nope. These would make very difficult pets. Um, they are super cool animals, and if you get the chance to go see one at a, an AZA accredited zoo or aquarium, you should definitely take that up and go do that. Um, but their water temperature right now is 56 degrees. If you get a higher, too much higher than 65 degrees, you're probably going to end up losing your salamander. Uh, they don't handle high temperatures that well. They need pristine water. Um, which is we have we have a great water quality testing here. We have two people that are rocking it out. Hey James, hey Ariane, and we have they're tested weekly, and we're always hitting those parameters. Um, uh, but it sounds like that's all the time we really have for questions right now. I love those questions. Great questions. Uh, be sure to check the link because there's a really awesome activity on making slime, and I'm pretty sure everyone loves to make slime, uh, which is reminiscent of these guys. They have a mucus layer, like a lot of fish, that kind of protects them uh, while they're underwater, and, and that's what you're gonna make. So, thanks everybody. It was great to see you. We'll see you next time, and I forgot this at the beginning. Hi, Emmy, hi, Peter. See you guys next time. <laughs>